It is winter, and I don't care what part of the country that you live in. I'm sure right about this time, you are experiencing colder than normal temperatures. And that is no different here uh, than where we are in Wisconsin. So if you're wondering what are some great ways to help your aging loved ones, whether it's your aging parents or grandparents, what special considerations, what what can you do to help them stay safe and also to deal with the winter months? That's what today's Tuesday Tips is going to be all about. We're going to share six tips to care for your aging parents during the winter months. So uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Pam Dunwald. I am one of your nurse advocates from Your Nurse Advocate Consulting. And every Tuesday we go live in our uh, Facebook forum. And that is um, a group that we have. It's a private group called Speaking Out on the Care of Your Aging Parents. And it's a place where we provide tips, strategies, information, discussions. We answer questions. Thursday nights, we do an open open office where we're live online answering any questions that you might have as far as resources, what you should do, uh, and how to help your aging loved ones. So we're glad you're here. Um, if any of you are watching us live, I'm, I can see that you're here. If you have a question during um, our chat today, just drop in a question. And for those of you that are catching us on the replay or on a YouTube video, you know, um, the links there, you know, as far as the group goes, come check us out, hang out with us a little bit and see if that might be something that will benefit you and your um, aging loved ones. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So tip number one, uh, dress in layers. Older adults, they're much more susceptible to hypothermia. Hypothermia can happen in as little as 10 to 15 minutes of exposure. And sometimes when we're dealing with someone with dementia or forgetfulness or Alzheimer's, I mean, sometimes they may not understand or realize how cold it is and, not, and get out of the house really dressed inappropriately. So it's real important to uh, keep them warm, dressed in layers. We can always take a layer off, but when you're cold, it's, it's hard to get you warmed up. So, so to keep them warm, the layers could be loose fitting clothing, uh, sweaters, vests, a warm hat, scarf, and gloves. And like I said, you can always take them off, but it's hard to, to warm them up if you don't have those extra clothes. All right, so so tip number two, we need to keep their houses warm. Now I know in, in our home, we don't keep the uh, thermometer, um, we, we keep ours about 65. My my husband gets very warm, but the recommended, the recommended, the recommendation for uh, setting your thermometer for an, an aging adult is between 68 and 70 degrees. They have found that um, between the temperatures of 60 to 65 is low enough that, that that our seniors and our elderly can get into that hypothermia trouble. So that's the recommended uh, degrees to set your thermostat at. So make sure the doors and windows are properly sealed. I know if there's old homes, sometimes it's, you know, it's a good thing maybe, you know, late fall, you know, uh, before the holidays, get the plastic on the windows and get all that so that you don't have to be doing that in the in the freezing cold. Um, you know, the the door, the things that go on, uh, on the door to help keep the drafts out. You know, we have plenty of those in our home that we use. Uh, so tip number three, encourage exercise. Number one, the exercise gets their, their circulation going, helps them stay warm, also is essential for their not only their physical health, but their mental health. Uh, oftentimes, um, seasonal depression occurs during the winter time. And if you live in an area where it's darker and colder, um, then it's very difficult and people can get this, this, these moods of this depression during this time because they're not active. They're not seeing people. They, they don't have anything to do and they really just, they really get down. So we want to encourage them to participate, exercise, whether it's, um, you know, watching a video or on the treadmill or the stationary bike, you know, the elliptic, whatever you have at home, you know, just to, to get in that habit of, you know, exercising and moving during the day, even during the winter. And encourage them to participate in some low impact exercises such as walking. I mean, obviously here in Wisconsin, we're well below zero right now. So, and we're in on alert day. So not a good day to go outside and go walking, but sometimes those, those nice winter days, even if it's chilly, the sun's shining, it's not real windy, great day to get out there and go for a walk. Stretching, yoga, chair yoga. Chair yoga is very popular with um, our elderly because they can do all the exercises by either sitting in a chair 
or if they're standing up, they're holding on to the chair. So you don't have to worry about getting down on the floor and not being able to get up and get on all these weird poses that your body just doesn't do anymore. But yet you get the full benefits of stretching and and working out and, and then the mental benefits of, of the yoga. So that's a great um, exercise for our seniors. Number four, monitor their medication. Winter can increase the risk of falls due to icy sidewalks and slippery floors. So you want to make sure that uh, if they're having issues with dizziness or if they start a new medication, pay close attention if they if they exhibit any uh, side effects to those medications. A lot of the water pills, you know, if they're being depleted and one of the reasons, especially if they're taking water pills in the wintertime, is... Um, our seniors already don't have the th same thirst mechanism as the rest of us. They don't get as thirsty. And so now you bring on the winter or the cold months and they're not hot. Well, they're not going to even get less thirsty. So it's really, really super important to make sure that they're getting enough fluids during the winter months. And if they're taking water pills and it's making them pee frequently, they could be dehydrating themselves, which is going to lead to, to dizziness or confusion. And this is, could lead to falls, especially, you know, slippery sidewalks or when, when walking and, and getting outside is a little bit more treacherous, treacherous in the wintertime as it is. Uh, provide nutrition meals. A balanced diet is, is really vital for a senior's immune system. I mean, we're smack dab in the middle of cold and flu season. We're seeing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, all of the above. And so if they're not eating properly, a uh, good time to make sure that if they're struggling with vitamin D, again, it, it's I, I don't recommend that you just go to the store and, and get some of the, you know, over the counter, just start heaping on the vitamin D because the only way to know how much vitamin D you really need is to be tested and have your doctor do a blood test to see if you are vitamin D deficient. If you're deficient, then the doctor is going to be able to tell you based on your lab results, just how many international units of vitamin D you should be getting. You can get vitamin D toxic. So this isn't something, you know, you, you want to check in with your healthcare provider, but this is something is an easy fix and also lack of vitamin D in the winter because you're not out in the sun can help with that seasonal depression. So just check with your provider, your nurse practitioner, whoever you see um, for your medical care. Uh, one of the other things, be becoming dehydrated um, and not drinking enough, especially in the winter, that could lead to urinary tract infections in our elderly. Again, urinary tract infections are notorious for confusion, you know, dizziness, falls, um, not knowing where they're at and doing things that, that you can't believe that they do. But and, and for some reason, that's how our elderly can react to urinary tract infections. So the last one is tip number six. And this is more of a, um, a mental health tip, but, you know, you want to stay connected. Um, our seniors, senior isolation is a huge issue. Uh, it started getting a lot of attention during COVID when we had all of our seniors in nursing homes that were being isolated to their rooms. Visitors couldn't come in. And just now, you know, understanding the toll of, of that senior isolation takes. So make sure that they're getting um, your visiting, even phone calls. You know, if, if the weather's bad, if there's multiple family members, hey, take a day of the week. You know, I call, I'll call mom on Mondays after work. You know, you call mom and dad, you know, on Saturday morning, you know, spread it out so that it doesn't become so overwhelming for everyone. But you want to do these check-ins, even a phone a phone call um, from from a family member or relative or, you know, can can really brighten up their day. And it, it, it puts it adds a little spice to their, you know, doldrum. I mean, if every winter day is the same day in and day out, they're doing the same things that can get really, really boring. And so encourage them if they have neighbors close by, you know, playing cards, putting together jigsaw puzzles, you know, something that they can get if they're senior centers, if you're in a more of an urban area and they have access to a senior center, you know, that where they can play bingo, or if you've got a community hall that does bingo, something that they can get out and get some socialization and, and meet some other people during the winter months uh, would really, really go a long way. Now, those are our six tips. And I just want to say one um, last thing. A lot of people now with this extra cold is using resorting to like space heaters and things like that. Space heaters, uh, 
you know, can help to warm up a space that is not getting a lot of heat, but especially with our seniors, there's a lot of considerations. Number one, you know, are they going to check it? Will they go to bed and forget to turn it off? Or will they leave the house and leave it running? Um, are they going to remember to turn it off? These are some of the, the concerns with that. And, you know, I'm, I'm in a business networking group and one of the gentlemen is uh, with a fire protection company. And just, you know, in these last week, the number of, of uh, space heater fires that have been uh, reported. So it, it's really a double edged sword if they don't, if you can get away with not using them, you know, that's best. But we understand sometimes it's necessary, but please take into those extra considerations when dealing with our, our elderly loved ones that are um, in need of using a space heater. So those are our six tips for tonight, short and sweet. And we will see you back here next week for some more Tuesday tips. And just a reminder, stay tuned. Our senior summit is coming up. Registration is going to be February 1st. We are going, this is going to blow you away. This is going to be 28 topics, 28 speakers, all things caring for seniors, resources, health information, and stay tuned. Like I said, registration will be February 1st uh, for our 28 speakers and 28 topics. We're really excited to bring that all to you. So we'll see you next time. Take care.